Welcome back to Nightcaps Nostalgia. As always, it's me, Justin Poe, and with me as always... Oh, you're waiting for me. Nathan. I'm always waiting for you, Nathan. It seems like that's just the chase that life has dictated for us to have. It is 2.40 in the morning. I am less tolerant of your whimsical <laughs> bullshit. All right, so the last two games that we played were 007 Age Under Fire on the PS2. Yes. And Black on the Xbox. Correct. Adrian, both both first-person shooters. Both first-person shooters from roughly the same generation. Black's a little newer. You know, yeah. shine your coat of paint there. But yeah, uh, 007 Age Under Fire was my entry for this week. I gotta say, she holds up pretty well. It's very forgiving with the uh, auto-aim that it has on there. Um, the controls weren't too bad once I figured out a control setup that worked for me, which was nice to have, because by default, that game has atrocious analog settings. Which has, we, we've shown in some of our earlier multiplayer episodes. Yeah, having movement tied to both controllers, but movement being up and down on one analog stick, or not both controllers, both analog sticks, having move up and down on one analog stick and then move left and right on the other is just an awful system, in my opinion. Yeah. But it's not here nor there. Um, once you can get past that, though, I think the game still holds up. Uh, for me, I have a shit ton of nostalgia for it. It was one of the first games I ever owned on my PS2. And I did have experience. I've beaten this game as a kid on the GameCube, so I wasn't blind going in. I'll be honest with you. Hopefully, John is still drinking to every time I say that. But <laughs> cause I think I said it like four times right there, back to back to back. We're, we're going to kill our buddy, but yeah. You know what? He's more your buddy anyway. I think Age of Under Fire has to go to number two for me on my list right now. Okay. And you're we're, we're setting that in stone? I'm putting pen to paper? Um, well, we're going to have a bit of a discussion about it, I guess. We're, we're putting uh, the... T- uh, preliminary uh, down as number two. A-U-F. Okay. Age of Under Fire, like, I just have a huge nostalgia for it. I think it's got a great replayability with the fact that you unlock stuff for the earlier missions by doing the missions over and over again and getting a higher score on them. And, uh... I, I'll be honest with you, the only thing really keeping it from a number one on my list thus far is it's got literally no story. It is all mechanics all day, but it's a game that I'm super familiar with, the game that I have a lot of history with, and then I, I think has the right level of cheese where Dark Watch totally missed the mark on. Like, Dark, like this is... <laughs> another like, episode, another Dark Watch reference. Yeah, this is literally like a better Dark Watch for me. I mean, just to compare it to another first-person shooter yeah. we have on the list already, this is what Dark Watch could have been, in my opinion, if they... Really had a better idea of what direction they wanted to go in, I think. Okay. Um, so we're, we're, we're sitting in number two for you right now. Yeah. What I'll do is on when I edit this, I'll throw up uh, a list and shit like that so yeah. people will see the list so we don't have to keep referencing it. But uh, for me, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at, I'm starting at the bottom of the list and working my way up, right? Okay. Would I rather play Asian Under Fire than God of War? God of War 1 for PS2, not God of War the franchise. Right. Uh, yes. Okay. Would I rather play than Rule of Rose? Yes. Yes. I could, yeah, I know how you feel that already. Here's where we start to get more difficult. So, would I rather play it than Flintstone's Dinosaur Peak? Or, uh, what are they... Surprise Surprise. at Dinosaur Peak. Okay. On a day-to-day, I think yes. Okay. Because what's holding me up on Dinosaur Peak is I think they're trying to have too many mechanics on too little buttons. Like, I I think if Flintstones at Dinosaur Peak would have been on the Super Nintendo, it would solve a lot of my problems with it. The mechanics are what are holding me back on that. Which is fair. Uh, You would be the more, uh, the guy to ask about the mechanics of the game anyway. And another one, I'm going to bitch about Flintstones here, because the more I've sat on it, because we recorded it all this in the same day. Yes. So Flintstones, I think we played like an hour and a half, two hours ago. Mm -hmm. Barney not showing you that he's wobbling and about to fall off when he's standing on a a pole really bothered me, and I could tell it bothered you too. And that's something we never would have known if we didn't read the manual before recording like what the fuck's going on here yeah it has no visual indication you just have to know the timing from having him fall exactly which i i don't like that at all so age under fire it's going above flintstones for me okay 
Red Dead Revolver. I, they're games that mechanically are very similar. Like, it's short, bite-sized segments that are meant to be replayed for a better score, for better unlockables that you can use in different places in the game. I think I would rather play Red Dead Revolver than Agent Under Fire. Interesting. I had the exact opposite reaction where at the end of the day I looked at it and I was like, between the multiplayer options for both and the single player options for both, I think Agent Under Fire edged it out for me, which is why obviously it stole number two from Revolver. Yeah. But it was it was a close one for me. Like that there's a lot of nostalgia pulling that that train, I'll be honest with you. Because I'm sure the farther I go in Agent Under Fire and, and the less I'm remembering the levels, yeah. I'm sure the more I'll be like, man, this game's got some pretty shitty design. But having replayed Red Dead Revolver recently and not having done the entirety of Double Well, Dead, recently. Yeah, like within the last year, yeah. easily. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would say it, maybe I still have some rose-tinted uh, goggles, as you like to say, nostalgia goggles. But, yeah. For 007, Age of Fire, but um, I'm going to stick with it, even with the goggles on. I think it's number two for me. Yeah, I'm fine with it. And it's funny, like, I'm looking at the games we have on this list. Most of these are from, like, quote-unquote, your area or your generation yeah, you of kind consoles. Of, you kind of expressed that when we first talked about it, that you wanted to hit this area. Yeah, you want to talk about nostalgia goggles. I think our list is going to fucking separate huge Oh yeah. once we start getting to, like, my N64 games and shit. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. That being said, I'm I'm fine with Agent Under Fire being the new number four and greatest my, game of all time, and my number two greatest game of all time. I'm happy it came up your list a little bit. I was worried for a second. Yeah. Um. No, th there was no because Dinosaur Peak. It's just it, I was talking to you a little about this off camera. I think the way that Red Dead Revolver and 007 Agent Under Fire structure themselves is it lends itself to replayability and like really honing your skills at one particular part mm. and just grinding that and grinding, not used in a, uh, a negative way for me here. It just getting better, unlocking everything. It, it, it in a time when I would have been, or what I, Jesus Christ, I'm talking over it. Did I mention it's two forty in the morning? <laughs> but, but the thought I'm having is I'm, I'm looking at this from when I was a kid. And I did have this game as a kid. I played so much of it on GameCube because I didn't... You were in the same boat as I was, as yeah. most people. You you played what you had when you had it, whether it was good or not. Yeah. I played so much of Agent Under Fire on the GameCube and had a fun time doing it. Yeah, I'm not sure if I, if I could even be objective about the game at this point, right? But these aren't objective lists. These are our lists. Exactly. Which, which is why I wanted to do two separate ones instead of arguing with each other as a, a channel list. Yeah, we would have to compromise. We're terrible at compromise. No. Oh, yeah, no. The, the compromising nostalgia? Oof. <laughs> that should have been our YouTube channel name. <laughs> That's what we're going to call the list. But uh, ah, Fair enough. I think black is a... Uh... Black, black is up next. I, I think I've said everything I said without getting like too into a full review. Yeah. Since Black's your entry, do you want to start off with it? Yeah, so I gave a little bit of his, my history with Black in the episode of what audio is left in the episode after that mic bullshit. <laughs> but uh, Black was a game that I played at a friend's house, really enjoyed, but I realized I only ever played up through the third level. And that's a game that I'm playing on my own past what we did in the, the episode. It that's a game where I would never see myself sitting down and playing for more than a level at a time because it's, it, it's so much of just, you're doing the same thing. Hmm. And part of the reason I'm really enjoying black though, I got it for $10. Yeah. Like that is a solid time for $10. Like it, it's not like what retro games can be, especially like something like rule of Rose and dinosaur peak where we're talking like, over two grand for the two combined yeah like that's a game you can get in get out for 10 bucks and like that that's most of what's on our list and it's a good time for 10 bucks dude fucking god of war is a great time for 10 dollars. like it's at the bottom of my list right now until we put black on it but like bro fuck yeah go get go buy god of war just because it's at the bottom of the list doesn't mean it's a bad game i don't think any of these games are bad games right now i don't think we selected any bad games the first no. go around mind you dark watch you are leaning towards it being a bad game 
Um, I unsatisfactory. I'd say bad. I think kind of usually comes from either a sense of maliciousness or a complete yeah. lack of care. I think that was just given a lack of you know personal care. If that makes sense. But it, yeah, black is is. I would describe black uh, as I would, would describe dark watch. Wasted potential. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like the mechanics are solid, but my problem is enemies are way too spongy. Uh way too like you think the locust in Gears of War are bullet sponges. You have not played black. I have to say, when it comes to black, I it's funny, you say they have they have the fundamentals down. I think this comes from a misunderstanding of what the fundamentals are, right? Sure. Like what makes shooting games enjoyable? And this it's it's reaction right that's one yeah. of the reasons why you know doom has turned into like a speed machine of a first person shooter game right but when we get down to it it's like hey if i do an action i want the response that i want to get and i think black is kind of just lacking on what kind of response shooters want from a shooting game you know it they're bullet spongy the guns have extra bolts to fire extra bolts to show off the guns for even longer yeah for example like a standard ak has 60 rounds in the mag Whereas, like, in tradi- the tradi- yeah, in black, where any other AK has a standard 30 round mag, right? It so, is, it is definitely noteworthy to me. Um, and something I wanted to touch on briefly in the middle of your, yeah, it like I said, the, these aren't meant to be full reviews, they're just quick impressions. I, I'm, I'm an operator here under the same, I. I would much rather play Bushido Blade than Black. Dark Watch, I having played them both in the same day. Yeah. I would much rather play Dark Watch than Black. Interesting. Honestly, I'm I'm putting Black at my new number. Six. Like, right in between Flintstones and Rule of Rose. Yeah. Because, like, it's... It's fun for $10. That That's the best I can say. Like, I'm kind of putting it in the same boat as God of War. But I would still rather play this than Rule of Rose. Interesting. Because I feel the exact opposite. This, for me is going uh, just above Dark Watch, just under Rule of Rose, becoming my new number four. Well, no, no, no. It's, I haven't renumbered them yet. Oh, that's right. So it'd be... I forgot we'd add another one. So my new number five? Something like that? Doesn't matter. Yeah, we're doing this on notebook paper. But by the next time we record, we will have this on the computer and much easier to, to deal with. But um, we're doing this analog style right now. Yes, unfortunately. It's one, two, three. Even though four. we have all this equipment, <laughs> black is your new number six. Okay, that's funny. You said six too, didn't you? Yeah, that is funny. You and I both believe, agree that black is the sixth best game out of the available games we've looked at. Out of out of every game of all time that we've ranked so far, yes, it is the sixth best game. I'm excited for that, Nathan. There is common ground between us. Maybe there is a two state solution between Poe and Nathan. I was gonna call you Nate Nate Land, like Zar- Zanzibar Land, but it just like it wouldn't work unless I explained what the reference I was trying to make was. I think ga- I think anyone watching this would know what fucking Zanzibar Land is. Right, but I had to bring up Zanzibar Land to explain what the fucking Nate Nate Land means because that means nothing without the context that I'm trying to invoke. Oh. By the way, I feel like we never mentioned this, but what better time to mention it than the last recording of our night? If you guys have any suggestions for entries, feel free to leave them down in the comments and the Discord. Uh, well, these people might not be in the Discord. Sure. I- I'm just saying we're taking all suggestions from everywhere. We listen to everybody and almost follow no one's advice. So That's accurate because almost nobody follows us and even less people tell us what to do. Exactly. So I'm happy we're on the same page thus far. Know your place, people, and it's underneath of us. Wait, was that the message you were supposed to take away from that? Oh, no, we're getting cut off right there. Uh, Bye. <laughs>